I remember 20 years ago, you were the makeup brand of my formative years. And this every time I put makeup on now, I think blend, blend, blend. And I thought, that is you. You said that, didn't you? And it was you. So the power of words, I, even 20 years later. I mean, look, I believe in it. So thankfully, that, that's the thing. And the other thing is, do you remember? I mean, it's such an easy phrase, blend, 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 and I actually believe it. So it's not just a tagline or something like that. And the fact that it's resonated with you and stuck in your head, and whenever you're doing your makeup, you hear my little voice. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm chuffed. I'm thrilled. I wish there were loads of loads of other ladies out listening in that same way. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. I was going to talk about that a bit later on, but actually, I think it's quite relevant now in terms of starting a business. Having a philosophy, I'm not saying blend, blend, blend was your philosophy. I think, I mean, you tell me, what is your philosophy and how important is it to have one that you, at the start, but also that you maintain throughout? Well, you know, the funny thing, Georgie, is I have, I do wear two hats. So I am a jobbing freelance makeup artist, and I have been for the last, I think I started in sort of 1984 as an assistant. So I wasn't formally trained and I was an apprentice and I learned on the job and I went along and then I got better work and, you know, I did editorial, commercials, TV work, um, campaigns, fashion shows, all of that. So it's, it was a, it's a different kind of being a makeup artist, which was in fashion. I wasn't a I wasn't a film makeup artist and I wasn't a TV mm. makeup artist, you know. Um, so that progressed on. And then I've always had, I sort of pride myself on a little bit of an entrepreneurial streak. You know, my ex-husband was an entrepreneur, so you, you, you're attracted to that kind of thing and you learn from each other. But I must have had a little bit of that seed myself because being an entrepreneur, I don't think you can learn that at a university or a course, that comes from your gut and the fact that you want to step into this arena. What you can learn is how to safeguard, you know, don't make uncalculated risk, you know, like there's so many tools out there to help you, just don't do the wrong thing just by being negligent and not listening to something, you know, so it, as a makeup artist, I did my graft. I learned to be better, you know, just whatever I wasn't good at, I would brush up those skills. If I was scared of, like, I was horrified when the Black Lives Matter movement came up and things where people were saying that there were models and other people, and celebrities, so upset that they'd be on a fashion show or on a shoot and the makeup artist didn't have makeup colours for them. They would have to go in the toilet and wipe off whatever that made them. And I was like, I'm, I'm like, if you're a professional, you've got to be able to do every one of every hue. And if you don't know, or you know that there are gaps or lapses in your knowledge, like in any other sphere of life, you have to go and brush up on those skills to make you more proficient. Well, why don't you do that at the makeup parties? There's no excuse there. So, you know. I'm not good at doing eyeliner, well I've got to learn, haven't I, because someone's going to pay me to get that right, and it's not just about getting it right on me, it's about getting it right on everybody. So there's that, and then there's a sort of, as time goes on, when you step into the commercial arena, there are different things to have to consider there, but at the end I just grafted and tried to be the best I could. I guess that's, you've taken what you learned as a makeup artist and, and brought it forward to your business, that if I don't know something, then I will learn it. But there's obviously inevitably going to be things that perhaps are not your forte. How important is it to get people around you that can do the things that perhaps you are not so good at? Well, if I just use it as a, as a makeup artist, you don't just do it yourself. You, you are a team player. You know, when you go on a shoot, whether it's on a location or a studio, there's a hairdresser, there's a photographer, there's the model, there's a client or there's a stylist or whatever there is. So whatever we bring 
and I bring, I've got to do the best in my field, but I've got to liaise and work with everybody else there. Before I would have got into that job, before I'm at the booking, confirmed and got there, I will have had to have an agent because nowadays we're in a weird times, you know, different times where mm. you don't need an agent. You can you can set up your own little website, put your portfolio up there, you're on Instagram, somebody could look at like your work and get in contact with you directly. But when I started, who was I how was I gonna go and meet the people at L magazine? Yeah. How was I going to find this client or that client? I had to have an agent, an agency. And they would look at my work and it was like a like a model, you know, they look at your portfolio and they reject you or they say you need to work more on this or you've got too much of this kind of avant-garde work, you need a bit more natural. Can you do all skins? Can you do this? Can you do that? You know, so I had to have an agent. Now you can be a bit more self-sufficient because our industry has changed. Somebody doesn't have to be just a fashion makeup artist, you know, she can set up a business as a bridal artist in all different areas of the country, work to the hours she wants to work, charge what she wants to think is fair. Um, the door is more open, wider, but it also means there's a heck of a lot more competition yeah. out there, isn't there? So standing out from the crowd is incredibly difficult. Um, I just wanted to go back, um, just in case anyone didn't hear me at the start, and I hope maybe I'm sounding a little bit and looking a little bit clearer. Yes, you are. Um, totally, I can see you, excellent. and you sound great. Perfect. So hello, everybody. Uh, just in case you missed it, um, we've hijacked Ruby's account with Time's Money Mental. Uh, we're doing a business series, and, and you know, save the best for the last, Ruby. Thank you so much um, for inviting us on. but. It's to support SMEs, freelancers, entrepreneurs at, at all the time, time is monumental, but at, particularly at this difficult time, and I understand this, I'm a freelancer, I'm a freelance broadcaster and journalist working for the time, Times Monumental and Times Radio. So I understand the difficulties that people are facing at the moment and I really hope we can pick up some tips about your journey, Ruby, and you know the successes and failures and building resilience and all of this and, and your views about the beauty industry generally because a lot of people who've joined will I'm sure will be part of that industry which has probably felt a little bit neglected at the moment but we did have some good news which you'll tell us about in a minute but I just want to do obviously your followers will know exactly who you are but you know MBE you I <laughs> believe am I right in thinking you've just joined the as advisory board member of the British Beauty Council is that right 25 years experience makeup artist the lady responsible for ruining my wallet over the years <laughs> of having an obsession with makeup um so thank you my face loves you um yes my bank balance doesn't um, and I was very chuffed to notice that I use some of the products that you use now it's, it's marvelous anyway that's a bit of self pride there um but tell us a little bit about, um, I suppose, first of all, you were very animated at the start before I joined on, and I knew exactly what you were talking about because I've been following the news. Good news for the beauty, beauty industry. There was going to be a march, wasn't there? Um, no. Tomorrow, I think it was. it was. Called off, but called off for a good reason. Yes. It's called, thank God, thank God. You know when normally you get something called off, your heart sinks, you're like, mm. yeah. but you know what, I'm chuffed I, that I was doing all of this because I'm so thrilled that the British Beauty Council really came to it and all the other people, and us, we have to pat ourselves on the back because we really soldiered on and tried to think that the government mm. was not, into, I think, was not, and it's my opinion, but it was not entirely fair or logical to... To, to open it in bits like that and our industry, makeup or beauty, whatever, we have to believe so hygienic, so conscious, yes. we're working fate, you know, so directly all the time. That is our job all day long. So it was a bit heartbreaking to think, oh my God, it's been almost four months and there's no source of income coming in. And nobody wants to break the law and nobody wants to be unsafe for themselves or for others out there. So the fact that we've got a D-Day, the 1st of August, we're all allowed to work safely with proper PPE, but you know what, we're, we're already yeah. geared up for it, we're ready to go, that is the best news. So I'm thrilled that the 
anyone again listening or looking at the thing, the marches, please don't turn up to Trafalgar Square. Not for that, mm. the march anyway. And if you do, proper PPE, but I wouldn't anyway. No, it just seems <laughs> strange, doesn't it? And an industry that, you know, actually is probably the best suited for, you know, hygienic working because they appreciate so much how, how it should be. Seems, do you think there was a bit of a, I don't want to say gender issue here, but I, I do wonder because I know that um, Times Radio certainly were talking about it the other day. Is the beauty industry taken seriously enough? We had, you know, barbers were back open and how close do they get? I, I what do you think? You know, it, it, we can't beat around the bush. It was a sexist thing. There is an element of a bit of misogynistic thing. Whether they meant it like that or didn't make it like that, the result is the same. You know, you did penalise a vast industry that makes a lot of money, I don't know, 28 to 30 billion at last count, you know, and contributes to our gross national product. Um, and it's predominantly women. There are, you know, there are both sexes in there, but it's predominantly women. And by doing that, you were kind of penalising this this very big body of work. And then there were small, you know, freelance artists like myself, which is our sole source of income up to a point, and it is for lots of other people. All small businesses, like I am, I like I said, I wear two hats. I've got a little brand, and in both areas. I was like, oh my God, what do I do now? Because I can't go on a shoot. And I do have this brand. It was in some wonderful doors, you know, like Harvey Nichols and Glen Eagle yeah. and Soho Farmhouse and the store, you know, in Berlin and around. But those doors were shut. So how was I going to make any sales other than just on the website? It was, we were all just, Scrapping, you know, but then there was that underlying bit of tension and anxiety because you're worried about your health, you're worried about your loved ones, you're worried about the greater, you know, humanity out there, and yet you're thinking, I don't want to break the law, but how do I, how do I go back into it? And every day that 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 window of opportunity is getting further away, you're thinking. How am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to pay the rent if you have a business? How am I going to just, yeah. just survive? You know, like it's not just, okay, so you have to, I do believe you have to have a positive outlook. Then you have to sort of take stock of, we can't ignore it with any money matters or anything in life. So the thing is, it's not just what you learn in the beauty industry or learn at school or when you're learning to be commercial or whatever it, it's a life lesson isn't it it's like anything yeah. else you can't spend what you haven't got you yeah. have to sort of plan exactly. is something coming in before i spend that out there's no other basically there are very complicated and very sophisticated ways to deal in all kinds of marketplaces in the world. I'm not a stock shit, you know, I'm not in bonds, I'm not this, I'm not that. You need all of those. It all comes down to is more going out than coming in. And I think that's all it is. And you need people like yourselves all at the time to give you effective advice. So you're not just making it up in your head. Yeah. It's lovely at this day and age that we can go somewhere and everyone's unique, you know, although we're in different businesses, I'm a makeup artist, everyone's got unique things, so you can ask for something that's a bit more bespoke for you in a safe environment, you can go on there, some questions will be answered quite quickly, but then I'm sure you can delve a bit deeper and somebody will give you a more in-depth question. Hey, Lee Pycroft, yeah. oh darling, <laughs> they're my friend. I was say. There's a lot of people who are writing at the moment, lots of thumbs up, lots of, uh, but there was one from Lisa and it sort of it disappeared now, but I think the, the tone of it was the thought of the finances is, and how you're going to pay from going forward is overwhelming. And I think a lot of people are thinking that at the moment. Yes, great news that we're all going to be open and back to business on August the 1st, but then there is this big bill behind us that we might have to think about because obviously it's going to cost a lot of money bringing people back and you know making sure all the products are going to be of good quality and then also we have this fear of the future that we keep hearing about we're in a recession the tidal wave of not to frighten anyone here but you know what how do you manage that sort of 
fear, I guess. Do you know, the most important thing is not to bury your head in the sand. Whatever that is, you cannot bury your head in the sand. You have to confront it and face it. So whatever state you're in, I think you literally need to be honest and transparent with yourself and, and, and just weigh yeah. up what's what what's what's there what is the actual real situation not what i wish it to be not what i hope it's going to be or oh if i just carry on like this it'll be all right no it won't you need to really look at it now yeah. and then you can prior you know you put it into some sort of order as to what has to be dealt with immediately you know short term mid term and in the long term so that you're not getting overwhelmed with, oh my God, I've got to, oh my God, I've got to do that. And then there's, and then, and, you know, so just do that and maybe write it down so what things have got to be addressed first. And the most mm -hmm. important is, I can see people saying, is lack of money, lack of money, it helps. Yeah. And it does, there's no two ways about it. And you, if you're in a business, You've got to hang on to that money. So don't start being wasting and throwing money around. Whatever little you've got, whatever you've got, you need to hang on to that. But in a transparent way. So if you've got lots of staff or lots of, I have a very small team, so I'm very honest. And you know, have they been furloughed? I mean, how have they been affected by this? Situation? Because I couldn't afford to do. If I went on furlough, then she wouldn't have been able to work. And I needed her to work because the other thing about mm. it now is I, the most important is hanging on to the money, but then the brand in two aspects. One is as a makeup artist, I am the brand, and then this is the brand, Ruby Hammer. I've got to push for things on social media. I've still got to sell online. I've still got to make sure it gets posted in the right way. So if I put her on furlough, she wouldn't be able to work. You know, so I yeah. reduce the cost, but then... I can't. I need. I can't do it all. I. I, I can't do it all. I. I it, small team member, but I was able to. I thought I won't pay my own salary, but I have to pay her. You know, yeah. all the teams I ask for any consultants, whatever. You know, I. I have to be able to afford those payments. I worked from home at the beginning, and then I took. I have a, not a normal conventional office, I work at Soho Works. So again, you hire a desk, two desks actually, because I'm yeah. busy, and then with the proviso, if they're not busy, I can bring a third one if there's people in. So that already helped me that I didn't have big outgoing rents and things like that, but other people did. So they would have to find, you know, go to yourselves and ask the landlord what, what help could they have about offsetting some of those costs yeah talking about if anybody is just as an aside there if anybody is struggling um there's lots of articles um i know i wrote it uh, about <laughs> uh, the schemes that are available and all those sorts of things uh, and also how to get started one of a couple of my favorite articles i wrote were how to start a business with very little money because when you think about starting a business you think you have to have loads and loads of cash and actually you don't and also the best kind of tech apps and you were talking about modern society i guess and Things like Instagram, how you can sell yourself now and actually you don't need an agent. And there are so many tools out there where what might have cost a lot in the past, you can just bring it all together and use apps. So go to Instagram, uh, Times Money Mentor, it's in the bio there. I want to go back, woo, way back, because you spoke about having that kind of, it's in your blood almost, the entrepreneurial spirit. But does that therefore mean that if you don't necessarily think that you have it, that's it? You should just give up? No, not at all. Not at all. I didn't mean it in that way. I just meant that the desire, you know, the desire, nobody, you don't learn that. Yeah. I mean, it's within you. So whether it's bringing out a product or a service or a business, it has got to come from in your gut. You've got that passion for it. You, you want to do this. You know, I love makeup and I could have just being a makeup artist and nothing else you know but yeah I exactly took it further by being an entrepreneur you know like i we i did ruby and millie with millie kendall we partnered up with boots and that was a huge brand on the british high street which is a completely different beast to what i'm doing now which is 
a, a startup. You know, I'm not a startup because I've been doing it a long time. But this business, whatever I want to call it, is a startup. So I had to yeah. start from right from the beginning with all the, you know, and I can see on there there are people saying we can use QuickBooks and things. Yeah, like that. exactly using apps to how to. But I want to know about what. What was the journey like between being a, a, a makeup artist and you're like, okay, that's that's my job. And then, you know, I, I don't know how many years later, was it so five years later, you're walking down the high street and there your brand is, I mean, it's the brand of people my age in sort of 30s and 40s of our f formative years. You know, it was I, huge. It was absolutely huge. I can't explain to people who don't understand makeup, you know. I mean, to be honest, nobody lives in a vacuum. You live life and you... It's ongoing and it's, it's mm. evolutionary, you know, you're just moving on. So I wanted to be, you know, I fell into being a makeup artist. I'm an economics graduate, by the way, so God knows that's how I started. That helps. And it <laughs> does help, but it doesn't, it, it helps and it doesn't help. You know, in makeup, mm. it helped me with the blending. It True. It with the business later. So gradually, you know, we did lots of things and me and my ex-husband, we brought Aveda to this country. We launched that here in Harvey Nichols and in, in, in QVC and in Salon International, so doing split level marketing. Then, you know, so you're working on the back, on the, on the back side of things and I'm still on the front of things. So you, you get privy to a lot of information and just, you know, and I thought, oh, I like this and we did Tweezer and Tweezers, we launched them, and Loxitan, Falgo. So there are lots of things we did. So what I'm saying is, it doesn't. You don't just wake up one minute. It's like it's always a step forward, one step, one step, one step. And then when the opportunity came, and this is what is important, is that when the op you've got a thought or you want to do something, think about it, make that finesse it. You know. And really ask yourself that question, um, is it what I really love? And what I do, and you can see it from me, I really love. I don't know what else I could do. Mm. I'm, I couldn't be in the catering business. I'm not the greatest cook on the planet, so there's no way. I love food, but I don't have enough knowledge and passion to do that. I have knowledge and passion for this. So that's bubbling inside me. And then when the opportunity comes... Be brave, test it out, go for it, you know, grab it, don't just talk about it and think about it, take some steps to do it and think, what would I do? And then, you know, that was all I've done. Opportunities came and within my remit, I grabbed them and ran them. It's, and it's fantastic, it's one thing about it grabbing the opportunities when they come, but that, I think a lot of people, the struggle is knowing when to leave something, when something has become, because you talk about the momentum and the building up, and I imagine a lot of people are you're building a business and it's growing, and, and you get to a point where you think, especially if you sold out to somewhere like, I think, Boots, where you think, this wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. It doesn't fit with my philosophy, and I look at your Instagram page, which says, unapologetically you. A lot of people will lose that if you do big tie-ups. Well, the thing is, we didn't sell to Boots. We didn't own it. Ruby and Millie wasn't owned by us. We partnered up with Boots. They put the money yeah. in it. They did all of that. Ruby Hammer is all me. That's me. I started with bits mm. of savings, bits of what I loved. I had, you know, the idea, you know, I my hero item was always this magnetic brush that I started. And I thought about it for years. I've had it on my radar for a long, long time, eight, nine years. I've even tried to give that as a, I consulted for lots of people and I tried to give that product to somebody to use it for them. But you know what? What's, what explain to us what's a magnetic brush while you're here? So if anyone doesn't know, brush. go on. It's, it's thing that you've been dreaming about for years. <laughs> oh, hello. It, it's got three heads. It's very good for liquid, powder and cream. It clicks into place got a lid that keeps it hygienic. People just talk about the click factor, but you know what? It's not just a click factor. It's not a stress um, tool. It's just got three heads that gives you like an angled brush that you can do your eyebrows and eyeliner. There's a close smudgy brush that you can do close work near your eyes, mm -hmm. but it can do your lips. 
There's this one that can blend eyeshadows, but it can also do concealers or anything. So once you've bought it, you can do with it whatever you want. Keep it for travel, keep it in your desk for when you're at work, keep it for touch-ups as a, as a professional when you're going on set, keep it when you're going out in your handbag, you know, you can break it in it. I only use that bit, I'll put that in my handbag. So that's it. I just wanted it to be a smaller thing that would work with everything out there. There's tons of brands out there. I haven't got the inclination to want to battle with those people now. I've done it in my years. Yeah. I'm nearing 60 now. I still have a love for this, so that's why I've stuck with it. And you said a very important thing where when you're in it and you're running around, you, you, you keep giving, 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 and then there does come a time where you think, do I keep giving or is it time to stop or is it not? You will have to keep asking those questions throughout the whole process. And unfortunately for us, this COVID thing has thrown bigger giants than a small, medium enterprise. It, is, it has toppled bigger people than us. So can you imagine, this is a very unprecedented time in all aspects of life with a bigger impact on our commercial and our business livelihoods. It really has. Um, we, as a makeup artist, first thing we've got to do is we've got to re, we've all done it in the lockdown. We cleaned up our kits, we organized, we threw away things that we haven't had time because we just rush, rush, rush. In the other businesses, we've had to think, how do you, you know, they already invested in the PPE, other things that they might have to, you know, is an additional cost. Every glove you've got to throw away, every mask you've got to throw away, every all these sanitizing, except, you know, and I keep asking, in our industry, we just got to a point where everyone was committing to the reduction of plastics and making it more sustainable yes. and all of that. And here we are now, we're just going to make that mountain bigger. That really scares me. I, I mean, it frightened me and I think, what the what do we do because this is a byproduct mm. of all this hygiene that we are geared up to but hello <laughs> my, my favorite phrase is this too shall pass and i'm hoping when this passes the lessons that we've learned about stuff and the environment will stick going forward um but i agree with you just when we're starting to get to a, a point where we're bringing our own coffee cups and all that sort of thing um we, we now aren't but at, Trisha here says, and it's a good question, and please do keep the questions coming. When we have an idea that we think may be a good one, where and who should we turn to for help? Well, if it's, I wouldn't know about um, a, a system on, on a computer. You know, I wouldn't know about that. All I know is, Trisha, you're a makeup artist, so I'm assuming you have an idea that's makeup related or skincare related or something to do with what you know because you you don't exist in a void you you'd have to trust a few people and the most important thing i did is i my entire life i have been helped i have had people that have been so kind and so open to me and i'm the same to them so the yeah. first thing is you've got to find who you think you trust and chat. <laughs> you you have got to network and just ask somebody, look, I've got this idea. Please, if you're going to be really serious, you might have an NDA, you know, like you don't want to show something if it's a gadget or something, get yeah. them to sign it. You sign it, get them to sign it so that you trust them that they're not going to rip off your ideas. But you are going to have to trust somebody and chat to somebody to say, I've got this idea so that you can gauge, then they might say, oh my God, I love that. Blah, blah, blah. How this? Or people, yeah. question. people always send you. And if they don't know, they'll try and send you to somebody. You've got to keep that door open and you've got to ask for help from everybody. That's within our a group. really key one. It's the, it's the keeping the networks going, the knowing your industry and speaking to people. Because I imagine you, you know, you've been in the industry for, for, for many years, yeah. that you know a lot of people. And, People will point you in the right direction of who you need to speak to, but especially if you're, say, you're a makeup artist on your own, you must feel quite 
alone? I mean, how do you, I mean, it's LinkedIn or social media. What, what would you recommend? No, it's not alone. You know, like your ideas are in there alone, but actually when you go to a shoot every day, don't work by yourself. I just, I just said, you will have somebody you trust mm. or you can ask somebody like the Times Money Mentor, you know, like do it in that, that dispassionate way. If that's what you want. But I always think yeah. it's good to talk to people around, you know, that, that not just willy-nilly stand on Hyde Park Corner and say, oh, I've got this idea, so somebody can stick there and do better than you. Not that, but people you trust, sound it out. Sound it out. That, is this a viable idea? Because in doing that, when I had this, because it didn't look this colour, you know, I knew that the first thing when I found this, I didn't invent this. I didn't create this. It has, it has a patent on it, and there's a manufacturer that has that patent on it. I then knew I love this item, you have to contact them. I contacted them and then you open a dialogue. And then I said, I don't like it in the form that you've got it in. I want to fine tune it. You see? I want it to yeah, be yeah. signature Ruby Red. I want it to be these heads. I want it to be that. How much is it going to be? Then they will say to you, well, you know, because they've heard that you work for Boots and all that, they, they probably are looking at vast quantities. And I'm like, I can't do that, I'm only little, I'm not a boots. I, what is the minimum order quantities you can have? What is the process? You know, and you, and you go from there. Just that opening the door and discussing it, sharing it with, in a safe environment with people you trust or someone's acumen that you trust. And at the times, they will give you good advice they can't afford to just give you things that they don't know or they'll have to say we'll come back to you you're researching and you'll go back to them won't you so you open that dialogue you start off somewhere not keeping it tight to your mm. head because it won't evolve it won't expand you won't be able to bring it to the market it must take a completely different mindset now from perhaps in the past i mean it, Young, I don't know the process of what it felt like to go from you know makeup artist to then Ruby Million, this massive brand in boots. But then all of the things that you've learnt to then start again. Other people might just think, ah, oh, you know, never mind, I won't bother. But you just keep keep going. And now it's what's the startup mentality like now with all of that experience that you have? You still falter. You still falter because, as I said, each startup is unique because it's unique to us and our level of funding, our level of ideas, our level of team. If you're just a little startup and you've got bucket loads of money from somewhere, it's an easier journey than someone who's got to come up with that money. You know, like you either go and ask somebody, an investor, to invest in you, but then they'll take control of what that is and how much are you willing to give away or not give away. Or you can soldier on yourself and get to a point where you think, my God, now I do need help. And you're prepared to sell a few shares in your company. But before all of that, you've got to secure it. So I had to, like I said, that brush is patented by somebody else. But Ruby Hammer, my brand name, isn't. I had to, the first thing I had to do is go to the patent office, you know, go to the, yeah. what you call it, I'm, I'm losing it, Georgie. What's the thing? The, Patent attorney's office, I imagine. I, although that sounds very American. I'll be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. I've never had to patent my name. Maybe one day, one day. But secure <laughs> that name or secure whatever it is, the logo or whatever it is you're trying to do that, so that you don't go way down the line yeah. and somebody else has access to it. You have to secure that first. So that's what you do. Now you step from there and then wonder how would it be, how, you know. I, everything I don't assume I know it all. I have a lot of experience and I rely on that gut, but I just make it like I don't know anything, how do I how do I do it? And then you realise, oh I do know a bit. Oh if I don't know maybe I could ask that person and then that person might lead me to something else or just that dialogue, that having a coffee that stirred something then I thought, ooh, I'm gonna do that because you know people and I did go in front of quite a few investors. Not many, 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 but a lot of them didn't want something this small because they wanted to ramp it up. They're putting big money in it to the effort for them to put that resource into you and the return will not be as big if it's not mm. 
ramped up, ramped up. And I was like, that's, that's great, but I've also got to pay that money back somehow. Someone's going to get that pound of flesh, and you've got to commit to that. When I was younger, I did. That's what we did with three million. Yeah. Just put it all out there. And you know what? It did not fail. Now, I don't want to do that where I don't know whether I'll have a roof over my head at the point. I've got enough that if it all went pear-shaped, it's not going to take my home away. I'm going to still be able to work as a makeup artist, you know, and make some money. You, you've got to draw some boundaries for yourself and clear what is acceptable, what is not, what will you give, what will you take, all of that, you know. So I, I just think it's also, and don't think, and that was a positive, but I knew that, oh my God, some, someone, there was a wonderful lady, we talked further and then she said, oh, is this a startup? And I was like, um, I'm not. And then I, and I realized, who are you kidding? In this definition, I'm a startup. Yeah. And she said, you know what? We don't, we don't invest in startups. So she was lovely. And I, kept, and I thought, okay, if I come back in three or four years when it's got to the thing, she goes, absolutely. I love this idea. I love all that. But it's not worth it for them to give you a tiny bit of money for you to go out there, they'd rather give you bigger sets of money and it will bring a bigger return for them. But you see... Which is a bit worrying for anyone listening, thinking, where would I get the money from if they only want to give money to established brands and I'm just a little startup and... But, but that's, that's one investor. I went in front of lots of others, you know, and it, it, it doesn't matter, but you need to go and see because it, it finesses it by somebody saying no or by saying that. I had to be clear in my mind, is this still what I want to do? Like, mm. they didn't put me off, Georgia. They didn't put you off. You, you know, you, you yeah. made you realize, okay, I need to do this even better. You refine it, you perform it, you literally, it gets clearer because it's clear in your head that no, this is what I want to do. And I launched in September 2019, which is one product, with this. And sometimes people were saying, oh no, you know, you need a whole line, you need a, you need a whole line, you know, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna get lost. So I realized, yes, I can't just go to a department store with one item in like a Harrods or Selfridges or Liberties or Harvey Nichols with this one thing. It could get lost in all that noise. Yeah. But I can start online and then I knew I had some other bits in my pipeline. I had about 12 or 15 products. So I finessed it, but yeah. I had that determination that no, I'm not going to, it's still this that I want. This is my hero item. And I launched it with Vogue and it was digitally launched. And I, I remember like just every five minutes, have they, have they, have they gone live yet? Has it gone live yet? You know, it was like a few days of, yeah, we're going to do it, yeah, we're going to do it. And then they did, and then I thought, okay, that's my first tagline, as seen in Vogue. You know? In that regard, exactly, but in that regard, if you have this thing that you absolutely believe in, this is your baby and you really want it, and, and actually someone comes and says, mm, I'm not sure that's great. How good are you at taking on board that advice and thinking actually do you know what yeah because you can get so caught up i know it's like writing an article and people go take that section out but this is the best section but it's too long it's like is that the same for you it's it's very emotional you have got to have you've got to be subjective and objective so if somebody told me that's a useless brush i don't think it will work I can fight until the cows come home because I can say, you may not like the colour, you may not like this, you may not like the pricing, you may not like blah, 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 but I love that item. So, you know what? I'm going to ignore what you said. But if there's anything else they say, it only fine-tunes it for you. It, it, I, I'm very good at... Look, look when we're like a, a, as a makeup artist, you're on a session, not everybody... Oh, we love that because you're looking at it. And yeah. Clients got to be happy with um, what we've done. So you have. I'm very good at taking criticism as long as it's not like you are shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upset about that, but you say, you know, that eyeliner could just be a little bit more blended, and you say, of course, and you soften it out. How about that? Do you like that? 
you have to be able to listen and take that on board and realize selfishly maybe they've done me a favor i never thought of that before or that is a load of no that's a load of rubbish this is why this is still should be this way boom <laughs> i know i hadn't thought about that especially with makeup artists because it's so personal i mean women are looking at their faces all the time or men and and, and they know the sh and then you do it and i just remember one shoot I had and, and I cried because I didn't like it so much and I don't normally do that that sounds really bad but I'm, I'm curious to know little anecdote there and um, whether whether being a woman has impacted and I don't mean this in looking at excuses or anything like that just the fact that just for examples you know female founded companies get less than one percent of total UK capital of venture capital which you were talking about while men founded companies get 89 percent you know if you're talking about you said it earlier the decisions not to open the beauty industry by the government during coronavirus there is an element of sexism there if you're thinking about starting up or you know building or growing your business at this time is difficult anyway but do you think there is still vestiges is there still issues about being a woman being a mother I'm not the most techno savvy person at all. It really freaks me out. I go all like that, like it just does. Mm -hmm. The things I can cope with, this freaks me out. But I've had to step into that arena. It's not second nature to me. I've got to know that that's what I have to do. So at the end of the day, arm yourself up. Arm up. Everyone who steps in that arena has to arm up. Put your gear on, put your guards on, and go out there as a gladiator to fight for what it is you want. Be prepared to, I don't want to, you know, we've got to kill or be killed, but be prepared to take a few knocks. But um, just being female and just using that mindset, I think we've got to get away from that because it does not stop you. Yeah. It does not stop you. Looking back then, but to wrap up, thank you so much for giving us so much of your time. Uh, Ruby, in her 20s standing in front of you now what do you say to her and the advice that perhaps you would give her about the journey ahead and what you would do differently i would say to her um really do nurture yourself and your confidence and your esteem and pay attention to your instinct and your gut Really, nothing falls in someone's lap. You know, like nobody just suddenly in one minute you win the lottery and you become this. No. Did keep up the, the discipline, the hard work, the focus. You know, nothing comes without hard work. And mm -hmm. nothing comes without good intention. You know, like really, I mean to do that. That's what I actually mean to do. Not strip it away from somebody else or backstab somebody else, do this or do that. You know, like really uh, just... Treat yourself and others the way you want to be treated because there's help out there. No one's psychic. People don't know if you need help. I think I would shout for more help, which I probably was like, not I was so proud, but I was like, oh no, they're too busy. They're not going to help me with this. And now I realize actually, if I asked, they're going to help. And now more than anything, I ask everybody, is there anything I can do for you? I may not be the most equipped to do it, but I'm going to ask because there may be something I can do for that person. And somebody else will help you along the line. It's not a tit for tat because you help me and you're the only one that's going to help me. No, it could be just because of the greater good. I did something for you and karmically somebody will do something for you. Whatever advice that is. Then go to the best you can afford, like the legal advice, whether it's your accountant or a lawyer or whatever that is. Don't yeah. skimp there. I don't mean you have to go to the flashiest lawyer on the planet, but like whatever it is, like I say with makeup, buy the best set of brushes and tools that you can afford. I said afford, not just, you know, if you haven't got it, you buy the best you yeah. can at that stage. And you, and you need to do that for yourself and your business. And then soldier on. And if, it, if you don't feel it, you're just waiting for the results of, oh, if, oh, this will make me famous, or I can get more money, or I can travel with it, I can do that, I can, no, it's, you've got to enjoy the doing, 
And I knew I had that then, so I would just say, Ruby, just carry on like this and know that some of those knocks have taught you the biggest lessons. Don't be frightened of it. Go forth. Ruby, what a lovely way to end. Thank you so much for having us, <laughs> imparting you. all your tips and advice and telling us about your journey. And we're very excited to hear what will come next. I wonder what you'll say to yourself you're in 20 years' time. Um, thank you. If anyone's been inspired by that, please do go to Times Money Mental website, uh, especially Times Money Mental Instagram page on our bio. But there's lots of links, as I said, to the careers section. So things like how to start a business uh, on a budget or the top tech apps and all those sorts of things that you can do. And some advice if you are struggling at the moment um, with coronavirus and we help you there as well. And um, someone's just written, you are a true inspiration, Ruby, and always give great advice. So I will echo that and leave it there and say thank you so thank you much. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, everyone, that I haven't taken your name. Indeed. I can see you there. Thank you so much.